Ah, well, well, well. Hello, everyone. It's me, Waddles. Hope you're doing well. I see you've made it, either through the whole series or to the video today. <laughs> One of those two. Today is, I think, time for the grand conclusion of the Villager Guide series. So far in this series, we've covered the basics of villagers, villager trading, village mechanics, villager breeding, and iron golem spawning, and today we'll be taking on the Wandering Trader. Um, I, I, as in talking about it, not fighting one, uh, yeah. So as always, if you like what you see, drop a like, subscribe, notification bell, turn that thing on, all of my links are in the description, and uh, let's start talking about the Wandering Trader. So, the Wandering Trader. This trader is not like all other villagers. Not only does the Wandering Trader only sell things, uh, the Wandering Trader also has the best shoes in the game. Wandering Traders will spawn in your world with two llama friends. These llamas are a little different than the normal llamas. They have a custom robe, a custom headdress, and a custom scarf as well. The llama clothing is entirely aesthetic though. These llamas have the same health as all other llamas. If everything goes right, there should always be two llamas attached by leads to the wandering trader. To make things clear, there will be one wandering trader. A wandering trader may spawn in your world after 20 minutes, but not necessarily. This spawning can fail, and if it does fail, the game will eventually try to spawn another wandering trader. The Wandering Trader and its two Llama friends will spawn within 48 blocks of the player. And unfortunately, this trader friend is not forever. The Wandering Trader will despawn after 40 to 60 in-game minutes and may despawn sooner if all of the trader's trades are locked. There is no way whatsoever to stop the trader from despawning. Name tags, boats, trapping it, none of that is going to work. The trader will be leaving. Wandering traders will always have six total trades. We'll be going over each and every trade uh, in this video. Wandering traders will only sell things, so that means always emeralds. Wandering traders are very expensive, by the way, as well, so you better have a lot of emeralds. Now, once a trade locks, the trade is locked forever. There is no restocking when it comes to these guys. You'd think with such luxury prices, they could work something out, but no. Once, once it's gone, it's gone. At dusk, Wandering Traders will drink a potion of invisibility. In the morning, the Wandering Trader will drink a milk bucket and reappear. The invisibility potion is meant to keep the trader safe at nighttime. Wandering Traders will try to avoid zombies and their variants, as well as illagers. Beside the invisibility potion, the only other method that the Wandering Trader can use for defense is its two llamas. These llamas will aggro to things like zombies and illagers. Now, regular villagers have no drops whatsoever, but that's actually not the case when it comes to the Wandering Trader. Wandering Traders can drop a potion of invisibility if killed while holding one, and they also can drop a milk bucket. Looting will increase the odds of these two items dropping. Now, a naturally spawned Wandering Trader and the Llama set will have leads in between them. If the player decides to kill the Wandering Trader, or if the Llamas go too far away from the Trader, then the leads will drop, so you can actually get some leads from these guys as well. And that's about it for most of the unique mechanics and things to know about the Wandering Trader, so let's go ahead and talk about all of the potential trades that the Wandering Trader may have on Java Edition. Better rock trades? Those are different. First, I have a key to show you. So, on the sign uh, is the price, then we have an emerald and a frame just for fun, and then finally, inside of um, each chest, we'll have an item, and underneath that item will be some barrier blocks with a number. However many barrier blocks are below an item is how many trades you will have with that item before the trade locks. For example, this would mean I can buy four blue concretes before the trade is locked. So with the explanation out of the way, let's go on to our one emerald trade. All of these items will cost one emerald. All of the items on the top of the chest will lock after 12 trades. At the bottom, some other trades. In all honesty, these are the best trades from the Wandering Trader. If you don't happen to have any melon or pumpkin near you, then this could be an all right way to get your hands on those things. A Wandering Trader can sell any of the 16 die colors. There will always be three die when sold. Moving on to our two emerald trades here, uh, we have two things, sea pickles and glowstone. Each can be bought five times. 
our three emerald trades are inside of this chest. Uh, mostly aquatic things this time around, but we do have some podzol and some cactus as well. The majority of these trades will lock after eight trades. Moving on up to our four emerald trades here, uh, just one thing, the slime ball. You can buy five slime balls from a wandering trader before the trade is locked. The five emerald trades over inside of this chest here, uh, all of the saplings. So the saplings, those are another good thing uh, to buy from the wandering trader if you're lacking saplings. For example, in the Minecraft guide world, I'm completely missing jungle saplings, and I've been watching for a, uh, a wandering trader to spawn and hopefully have this trade, but I haven't really had that luck quite yet. Now, don't get me wrong, five emeralds for a sapling, but if you need a specific sapling, uh, this is a potential way to get it. And last, but uh, not least, or, or is it, uh, the six emerald trade, uh, blue ice, uh, yeah. <laughs> One block of blue ice for six emeralds. Mm -hmm. So those are the trades, but keep in mind that each wandering trader will only have six trades. So that means six of those random trades that I just showed you. No more or less than six ever. So to summarize things, wandering traders may look like villagers and sound like villagers, but they actually are something that is a, a little different. They won't sleep at nighttime, they don't breed, they won't turn to zombie villagers, and they despawn no matter what. The prices are expensive as well, so don't know if it's worth it, but uh, it's totally your call. If you're loaded in emeralds, then, then maybe it's time to uh, send some of those over to your local wandering trader. But with that, I think we have just about broken down each and every villager mechanic in the Minecraft 1.14 and up update. On the end card of this video will be the villager guide playlist. If you missed an episode, go ahead and slide into that playlist and find that episode. If you still happen to have any more villager questions, go ahead and drop those down in the comments below. If something changes in the future, or if I realize that a lot of people are asking about something, maybe I'll make an extra episode of this series. But for now, that is just about it. If you've loved this series, or if you love what I do, maybe consider becoming a patron today. If you decide to, there are, of course, some cool benefits like my fan server, early access to content, and even episode dedications. If you're interested, check out the link down below. If you're not, then don't check out the link. <laughs> my Instagram, my Twitter, my second channel, all of that stuff is down in the description as well. My name is Waddles. This has been Minecraft 1.14 and Up Villagers, explained, broken down, and simplified always. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everyone.